Today's the day you set off on your coding journey. No longer will you have the excuse to quit or procrastinate because this will be a full guide to learning code. We will cover every minute detail of learning code so you can set off and actually become a programmer. And look, a lot of YouTubers would charge for this type of content. So all I ask is for you to like and subscribe to the channel. It honestly really, really go a long way. And with that being said, let's just get into the full guide. Part one, your mindset. Before you click off this video because I'm talking about mindsets, I believe that your mindset holds you back from achieving whatever you set out to do. You right now probably don't believe that you can code because you're self-taught or because of previous beliefs in your mind. And in my coding journey, I spent six months not seeing a lick of progress because I didn't believe that I could code. I would constantly tell myself that I could never be a coder, that I didn't go to college so I couldn't be a programmer, and constantly just feeding into my own beliefs that I couldn't be a coder. And I know some of you will skip this because it doesn't really vibe with you, but your mindset will dictate your entire journey. The world is the symptom of your own mind. And if you first don't believe that you can code and that you could actually work hard enough to see the results in code, you will never do it. Your mindset is the tool to your project and having the right mindset will give you the right approach to succeeding at code. And I bet you right now don't believe that you can code. You constantly tell yourself that you're not good enough or that you suck at React or JavaScript so you can never be a coder. So in this shorter part of the video, I just want you to realize how bad your mindset is. It took me a long time to accept this, but you have to understand that your mindset truly matters. And how you fix this mindset is to begin to truly believe that you can be a programmer even if you're self-taught or even if you had a bad grade in school. Cool. Most of the time, this is all we need to reach our goals and a lot of us forget about it. And whether you're going through self-doubts, try your best daily or as much as possible to constantly tell yourself that you can do this. Remind yourself that people in your exact position were able to learn code even though they were self-taught or even though they had worse grades than you in school. And once you're able to do that, congratulations, you're 90% there. Because now you're willing to put in the effort and sacrifices to learning code while believing that you can do it. Part number two, your goals and roadmap. You know, at this point, maybe you've developed your mindset and you're really excited to get into coding. You head over to Free Code Camp, you look up the most popular language that makes you the most money, and you start programming in that language. However, going into something without an action plan and preparation is like driving in the nighttime without lights. You will crash. How are you supposed to reach your destination if you don't have a clear roadmap of getting there? You're basically asking yourself to fail because you don't have the right path forward. Instead, right here, right now, we're gonna clarify exactly what you want and need to do to reach your programming goals. Do this with me right now. Get out a piece of paper, and write down exactly what you want out of your programming journey. What, what is it you wanna do? Is it backend development? Do you wanna be an iOS developer, game developer? Write down exactly what you want out of this journey. And now that you have your goal, I want you to reverse engineer how you can get to this goal. Now this will require some effort, but you're here for the long run and you want to reach your goals, so it's well worth it. Maybe look online, maybe look at a couple of YouTubers and see exactly how you can get to that goal. So maybe if you're in web development, maybe you have to do HTML first, CSS second, JavaScript third, lay it all out. It doesn't have to be perfect, you can fix it over time, but by having a specific roadmap, you will ease the process and you'll have a clear path forward. And I know it's a lot of effort, but I spent months doing the wrong things and wasted so much time. I literally could have been a developer like six months ago if I didn't waste my time doing Python, doing backend development, things I didn't really want and wasted time on these things. And once you have your roadmap, we can get it to the next part. Part number three, routine and execution. Congratulations, you have your mindset and your goals, but anyone could do that. However, it takes a special person to actually execute on these goals. This is the time when you're done hanging out with friends all the time because you're pursuing your goal in coding. This is the lonely entrepreneur that spends time at home working on their business, then going out to party. Now is the time to put your head down, suffer, and get to where you want to go. And look, I can't lie, it's pretty difficult, but I'm gonna try to lay it out for you so it could be as easy as possible. The first part is your study routine. Without your study routine, you can't learn code. And instead of looking for stupid things like the Pomodoro technique and these stupid freaking study routines where you have to do all these confusing things, break it down to two things. Learn a subject, 
and apply it. Head over to Free Code Camp or whatever your roadmap is and start doing this now. Whenever you're done a big lesson, maybe you learned a simple thing in HTML or if a specific aspect of game development, instead of moving on to the next thing, apply it. I wish I did this at the beginning of my coding journey. A lot of us just want to go through the lessons and ignore the true meaning behind the lessons. And it holds us back from truly learning code like an actual engineer. So instead, let's say you're working on JavaScript. Okay. You learn a specific part of JavaScript. Maybe it's a lesson on free code camp and you apply it through a small project. And FYI, these projects don't have to be that big. Just do the smallest thing possible. It could be as small as a simple function or even smaller, maybe you apply what you learned in the lesson. And I know it sounds like a lot of effort here, but you retain over 75% of what you learn by doing this. I'll even show you on the screen, there's like a learning triangle. You actually learn this much. While most people are learning 5% because they're reading and watching videos and not applying, you will be retaining 75% of what you learn. The next aspect of our routine is our discipline. The number of developers that end up quitting because it's difficult is really sad. And if you can't stay consistent, no matter what study routine you do, you will never reach your goals. Discipline is the stabilizer to your goals and without it, you will never reach these goals. And it's actually quite easy to build your discipline. All you need to do is set daily tasks on what you want to achieve and make a game out of it. It's so simple yet so hard because no one wants to put in the effort and time to prepare their day. But literally, get out a piece of paper every single day and write out what you want to achieve in code that day. And by having these checkpoints, you are literally motivating yourself to push yourself and get to your goals because you have a checklist. The human psyche, when it's rewarded for completing tasks, wants to do more. So maybe if you're learning HTML, maybe it's do two lessons on free code camp and one YouTube video. And what's interesting is that once you're done these, try your best to reward yourself with something. Now, obviously you don't reward yourself with a freaking iPhone. Don't be that crazy unless you have the money, but maybe reward yourself with some phone time, maybe a fun YouTube video or a funny video online. And I know some days you're not going to feel like it. And that's where the true discipline comes. But this is just a simple way to motivate you a little bit more and get to your goals. Editor Nazar here. I'm just uh, editing and I totally forgot to talk about uh, the more logical side of discipline. Like I understand that discipline is not just, you know, creating tasks and rewarding yourself. Like there are times when you're not going to feel like coding and you know, you're really going to struggle and you wouldn't feel like doing it. And all I could say to that is, you know, really want it. Like, I know that's sort of cliche, like really want it. What do you mean? But just uh, like constantly remind yourself of what you're going to get out of this. You know, like, why are you getting up in the morning? Like, why am I making doing YouTube videos? Because I want to be a YouTuber. Like, I don't feel like making YouTube videos right now. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit tired, but I still do it. Why? Because I remind myself that I have these goals and aspirations that I want to live and that by doing these tasks, I'm going to reach that goal. And a great way to build discipline is doing just that. So every time you may feel a little unmotivated, just constantly remind yourself that everyone else is going through this and that, you know, you're doing this for a reason. There's a purpose for you to suffer. There's a purpose for you to, you know, go through these lessons that are extremely difficult because at the end of the day, you're going to live a better life as a result of this. So I hope I explained that a little better. Apologies if I didn't, but yeah, back to editing. And the third part of our routine is our focus. This is the engine to your growth. This might be the most important part of the video because of how important focus is. I'll tell you something, right? The average person at the nine to five, they say works eight hours, right? You know, nine to five is eight hours. However, that's not the case. Most of the time, right? What are people doing? They're on their phones. They're doing meetings. They're web surfing or they're doing some unproductive tasks that don't really equate to work. And by the end of the day, they haven't done much work and they haven't seen much progress. And it's because they're truly working maybe two to three hours out of those eight hours. How, however, now imagine you removed all these distractions and all these things so that you can truly work. Imagine how much work you could do and how much progress you could see on your goals. You must understand that coding requires a shift ton of focus and by being distracted web surfing during your coding sessions listening to music or talking to other people while coding will take you nowhere and to get into that focused state 
we will be using deep work. Simply put, deep work is an undistracted state where we do the work that matters. It's kind of like that flow state, you know, when you've played sports or you're really focused on something and you don't really have any thoughts because you're so ingrained with the work and you're so focused. That's what we're trying to get into. So for this deep work state, all you want to do is remove all distractions and do the work in front of you. And if you do this, if you remove all distractions, your phone, turning off notifications, talking to people, everything out, you will do more work in four hours than others do in eight hours. Literally, there's been studies where people who have done deep work have done a lot more work. And it all comes down to that focused state where they are deeply focused, they're much more productive, and they could do so much more in that time. And honestly, this was the turning point for me as I went from an HTML developer an HTML developer to a full stack developer by doing this. I still remember the day I had a discussion with a guy called Small James, he's a YouTuber, and he was telling me he does four hours of deep work every day to get to his goals. And I thought to myself, I never did that. I was never focused. I was always checking my phone and notifications. And once I removed all those eliminations, I was able to do the work because I was working towards it. And once you do this, coding will feel like swimming down a stream. You know, it's super easy, you're going with the flow. While most of you right now are flowing upstream because you're constantly distracted and it's hard to get into that deep work. Part number four, iteration and improvement. Congratulations. You have your roadmap, you have your mindset, and you're doing the work to reach your goals. However, there is one thing that might hold you back from reaching your goals improvement. What I want you to do now is develop a new sort of psychology when it comes to coding. You should be a lifelong learner. By this, I mean try to learn something new as much as possible. It might be something in your subject, it could be reading something, but try your best to always learn. Coding is a never-ending subject that's developing all the time. Languages from two years ago are now outdated. And if you truly want to improve, make money, start a business, get a higher paying job, it's important to always learn. And obviously this doesn't mean you learn like everything all the time. It simply means to understand that there are always something new to learn. Whole year in and I learned something new. And even the best people I know in all aspects of life, Elon Musk, you know, Jeff Bezos, these people are always learning and they're always improving because they know that their competition is doing that. This could be something maybe in your study routine or an aspect of code, it doesn't really matter, but just always try a different way to improve. It could also mean something in your discipline, maybe it's removing a specific part of your distractions, just try to improve somewhere. So in summary, in this full guide, we covered your mindset, your goals, your routine, and finally your iteration and improvement. And I believe with these four things, you are well equipped to being a programmer today. You have your mental preparation and mental toughness through your mindset. You have the path forward through your goals and correct roadmap. You have the right routine and execution through building discipline and focus. And finally, you have the right approach to coding, which is a student mindset and constantly improving and iterating. So I really hope you found value in this video, whether you're a new coder or a long-term coder, I hope it found you value either way. And maybe if you're at the start of your coding journey, it may not make too much sense what you're doing and you're struggling a bit, but now you have the tools to move forward. And I know it's hard work and a lot of effort, but these were the things that helped me. And just remember that coding is a process, not an event, and that it just takes time to get to your goals. I love you all, happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.